Hey Jake, I wanted to uh, share something with you and I thought this would be an interesting way of doing it. What I wanted to share with you is one of my very favorite books in the whole world. And, one of my, and I think I've shown this to you before, but this is really just one of my favorites. And it's called Everyone Knows What a Dragon Looks Like. Yeah, everyone knows what a dragon looks like. It's written by Jay Williams, illustrated by Mercer Mayer. I didn't know that stuff. I not important at all. But like, it's got this little old guy on the cover I really like. We'll learn more about him. And it's about dragons, and I love the artwork in this book. So I wanted to share it with you, and uh, so that's what we're gonna do. So, here we go. Everyone knows what a dragon looks like. Written by Jay Williams, illustrated by Mercer Mayer. And I don't know how I got this or where it came from. It was a, I think I, I someone gave it to me legit. But it was an old library book. But it was one that was like legit retired from the library. So, everyone, oh, so, I love the artwork in this. Let's hold some of it up. It's got the little old man. Look, you can see there's a little rabbit down there. And this book is yours, by the way, Jake. And someday, and I'm going to share it with you soon, but I wanted to share it with you now. And I love this little village down here. The artwork's all, I really enjoy it. So, picture of a little guy. Everyone knows what a dragon looks like. Again, everyone knows what a dragon looks like. Okay, alright. The city of Wu was perched on a hill between two mountains. On one side of it was the Great Plains of the North, where the wild horsemen lived. On the other side was the land of China. Chinese dude. That's the T. It's got a really nice picture. I've always loved kites. And those trees. You can see birds, a little boy up in the tree. That looks like a nice place to be, huh? So that's the city of Wu. A lad named Han. Show the picture. A lad named Han was the gate sweeper of the city. He had no mother or father, and he was very poor. He lived in a tiny hut next to the gate, and his job was to sweep the, ro the road that ran through the gate. For this, he was given one bowl of rice and one cup of wine every day, and that was all he had. But he was cheerful, kind-hearted, and friendly, and when he swept the road, he whistled. Everyone who went in or out of the city had... A merry word from him, and that was all he had to give. You can see him down there. With his little broom saying hi to people. Look, there's a guard. Is that a little dog he has down there by him or something? Oh, what is that? Yeah, it looks like there's a little dog. So a messenger is coming in. It looks like there was someone important. By the way, I haven't read this in a long time. So this is the first time reading it for so, quite some time. One day, a messenger came racing along the road from the north. 
he said to Han, Take me to the ruler of the city. Han led him to the palace of the Mandarin, the great lord whose name was Jade Tiger. The messenger cried, Beware! The wild horsemen of the north are coming, a great army of them. They mean to destroy the city of Wu and bring war into the land of China. This would probably be a bad thing. You can see him giving the news there to the Mandarin and the kids watching. The Mandarin stroked his beard. Then he called together his counselors. They, they were the leaders of the merchants, the captain of the army, the wisest of the wise men, and the chief of the workmen. What shall we do? asked the Mandarin. There are four things we can do, answered the wise men. First, we can fight. Our army is small, said the captain. They know how to shout loudly, how to make threatening leaps, and how to wave their swords in the bra bravest possible way. But they don't know much about fighting. Well, then, secondly, we can run away from the city, said the wise man. If we run away into the land of China, the emperor will cut off our heads, said the leader of the merchants. Thirdly, said the wise man, we can surrender. If we surrender, the wild horsemen will cut off our heads, remarked the chief workman. What is the fourth thing, said the mandarin. The wise man shrugged. We can pray to the great cloud dragon to help us. That seems most practical, said the mandarin. So the gongs were beaten and the and the smoke of sweet incense rose up while everyone in the city prayed. See, everyone prayed. The next morning, as Han was sweeping the road under the gate, a small fat man came walking up the hill. He had a long white beard and a shiny bald head, and he leaned on a long staff. Good morning, he said. Han bowed. I hope your honorable stomach is happy, sir, he replied politely. Will you take me to the ruler of the city, said the, fat, the little fat man. I will take you to him, said Han, but he is very busy this morning. We are expecting the enemy, and the Mandarin is praying to the great cloud dragon for help. I know, said the little man. I am a dragon. Han opened his eyes very wide. You do not look like one, he said. How do you know, asked the little man. Have you ever seen one? No, said Han. Now that you mention it, I haven't. Well then, you see the old man at the gate, hot little chicky there in the foreground. Looks like she's reading poetry or something, I don't know. Well then, said Han, my finger itches. Oh, by the way, cool dragon there, huh? Well then, said Han, please come this way, honorable dragon. He led the fat little man to the palace. Showing up in the palace. He led the fat man to the palace. There sat the Mandarin with his counselors. They had just finished a huge bowl of rice and six dozen duck eggs for breakfast, and they were drinking their tea. The Mandarin looked at the little fat man with a frown. Who is this person? Why have you brought him here? He said to Han. Sir, said Han, he is a dragon. Don't be ridiculous, said the Mandarin. He's a fat man who is tracking dirt on my fine carpets. What do you want here, old man? I have come to help you, said the little fat man. But if you want a dragon to help you, you must treat him with courtesy. I have come a long, weary way. Give me something to eat and something to drink and speak to me politely and I will save the city. Now look here, said the Mandarin. Everybody knows what dragons look like. They are proud lords of the sky. They wear gold and purple silk and they look, they look like mandarins.
six thousand duck eggs seems like a lot, doesn't it? I'll show you the next picture. Let me get that in. What's going on? I was going to sneeze while I'm... No, I'm fine. Okay. How do you know? Ugh, this book is dusty. That's what it is. How do you know? Asked the little man. Have you ever seen one? Certainly not, said, said the Mandarin. But everyone knows that they, what they look like. Isn't that true, Captain? The captain of the army sat up straight, brushing the grains of rice from his uniform. Not at all, he said. Everyone knows that dragons are fierce and brave, like warriors. The sight of them is like the sound of trumpets. They look like captains of the army. Nonsense, interrupted the leader of the merchants. Dragons are rich and splendid. They are as comfortable as a pocket full of money. And they, they look like merchants. Everyone knows that. The chief of the workmen put in, You are wrong. Everyone knows that dragons are strong and tough. Nothing too hard for them to do. They look like workmen. The wisest of the wise men pushed his glasses up on his forehead. The one thing that is known, and indeed I can show it to you for 40, in 47 books, is that dragons are the wisest of all creatures, he said. Therefore, they must look like wise men. I mean, it kind of makes sense. At that moment, they heard screams and yells from outside. Oh, boy, it's kind of scary. Look at that guy. Oh, a savage looking dude. A messenger came running into the palace. At that moment, they heard screams and yells from outside. A messenger came running into the palace. My lords, he shouted, the enemy is coming. The wild horsemen are riding across the plain towards the city gates. What shall we do? Everyone rushed out to the gate to look. Far away, but coming closer every second, was the dark mass of horsemen. Dust rose high from their horses' hooves, and their swords and spears twinkled in the sunlight. The fat little man, the little fat man, stood quietly, leaning on his staff. If you will treat me with courtesy, he said, I will save the city. Give me something to eat and something to drink, and speak to me politely. That is the only way you, to get a dragon to help you. Piff Poffle, said the Mandarin, you are not a dragon. Everyone can see that you are only a dusty old wanderer. We have no time to give you free meals or talk politely. Get out of the way. He claims to be a dragon, dude. It's probably on drugs. I don't know. guess it depends on where you are. I guess if you're in a place like that and a guy claims to be a dragon, you might go, hmm, maybe you're a dragon. It's a good opportunity to play guest that nostril. Just saying. And he ran home to the palace and crawled under the bed where he was where he lay shivering. My gallant army commanded the captain, follow me. He turned and ran to the barracks and all his soldiers followed him, followed him. They all hid under their beds and lay there shaking. The merchant and the wise man and the chief of the workmen fled to their own houses, and all the people hurried after them. In a few minutes, the streets were empty except for Han and the little fat old man. Well, said Han, I don't think we have much time. The enemy will be here soon. I don't know whether you are a dragon or not, but if you are hungry and thirsty, please do me the honor of coming into my humble house. With a low bow, he showed the old man the way to his tiny hut. There he gave him a the bowl of rice, and the cup of wine, which were all he had. The old man ate and drank. He, then he stood up. Don't think much of the people of Wu, he said. 
But for your sake, I will save the city. That's good. Oh, dang. Let's start with this. Well, what's going to happen? It's not good. For the barbarians. He went to the gate. The wild horsemen were very close. They wore fur caps and skins of tigers. They shot arrows at the city as they rode hard on their shaggy horses. The little fat man puffed out his cheeks. He blew a long breath. The sky grew dark. And lightning sizzled from the clouds to the earth. The, a great wind arose. It caught the wild horsemen and blew them far and wide. Those who escaped turned and galloped madly away through the storm. The sky cleared and the sun shone again. The plain was empty. The little fat man said, Now I will show you what a dragon looks like. Pretty creative guy. It's going on. He sprang up into the air, and his form changed. He grew taller than the tallest tree, taller than the tallest tower. He was the color of sunset shining through the rain. Scales covered him, scattering light. His claws and teeth glittered like diamonds. His eyes were noble like those of a proud horse. He was more beautiful and more frightening than anything Han had ever seen. He flew high, roaring, and vanished into the deep sky. Han gave a long sigh and went to tell the Mandarin what had happened. Basically, got the same one that's on the back. When they're partying. The people of the city crowded around to hear the tale. They could see for themselves that the enemy had vanished. They cheered Han, pinned medals on him, gave him many gold pieces, and from that day on called him the honorable defender of the city. But best of all, said the Mandarin, we know what a dragon looks like. He looks like small, fat, bald old, like a small, fat, bald old man. And that's it, dude. There. I said, what's up? Small, fat, bald old men. So I'm a big dragon. So, there you go. My favorite book. Everyone knows what a dragon looks like. And there's some nice little lessons in here. I mean, let's think about it. There's the fat old man. Just be nice to us. Feed us a little. Give us something to drink. We're good guys. But... I mean, I think that the real story is being nice, you know, like the little boy and stuff. And even if you don't have much, you know, what you do have and that, you know, no matter where you are in life, you know, you, you always have that to give. You can be, choose to be nice to people and give a kind word and show that you care and show what kind of person you are. So, and it may help you with a dragon someday to save your city. Who knows? So... Glad I got to share this with you. I'm glad I thought about this. So, um, hope you enjoyed it. I love you, Jake. Um, and who knows who will see this someday. Um, maybe my grandchildren. Which I love you guys too. Don't even know about you yet. No, we'll talk. But I'm sure you're going to be great. I love you guys. Um, Andrew, too. Let me give you 
some credit here too. Read this book to you too when you were young. So this is for you too, son. Both my boys. So I love you guys. I'll talk to you later.